everybody! Thanks a lot for joining me. Today I am reviewing something slash tutorialing something that I have had a lot of questions about. No, I don't think tutorialing is a word, um, but that's okay. This is the NYX Contour and Highlight Pro Palette. This contains eight removable contour and highlight shades. It sells for, I believe, $25, and this was sent to me by NYX. Very interested in this product because contouring is all the rage right now. Seems like every brand is coming out with a contouring palette. And today I use this not only on the face, but also for a quick eye look as well. Um, there's eight shades in here. There really is a lot to work with. And I believe I integrated probably every shade into this look in some form or fashion. So I think there are more complex ways you can play with this palette or some very simplified ways you could use it. You know, just kind of going with one contour and one highlight shade, that's fine. The entire palette is matte with the exception of this highlight up here, which is kind of a pearly white and this pearly champagne colored highlight. And I think the textures of these powders are really nice. Um, they are creamy, they're pigmented, they're maybe not as rich and smooth of a texture as the uh, powders in my Smashbox contour kit, which this is kind of like the current leader of the pack in my contouring world because I just think this is simplicity and just wonderfulness here. Three shades, great quality. This highlight is everything. I mean, it's just like a perfect kind of satiny finish, just a, the teeniest bit of glow in that product to be beautiful, to actually bring light to the face and give you that little bit of glow. This is a great shade for contouring, and then this can be either mixed in with that shade to alter it a little bit, but these powders are terrific quality. Granted, it's gonna cost you a little less than double what the NYX one does, and you're getting a lot more in here, but quality-wise, I think this is a really great palette, and I just love how simple it is. And I know there are quite a few high-end contour palettes out there, several that I'm kind of like on the verge of trying. Like, I just got the new um, Too Faced contour kit. I am expecting to get the um, Anastasia of Beverly Hills contour kit, which I know I'm kind of late on. And I do foresee a massive like contour palette comparison video coming in the near future, but as far as drugstore stuff goes, there's not really a lot out there. And I must say, I do really like this. I think the shades are really um, on point for what one would want for contour. There's actually a nice cool tone shade right here that I think is really contour friendly just for creating the look of natural shadows on the skin. And then there are warmer shades and multiple finishes of highlight. You can totally... Um, um, kind of mix. I don't think people always consider that powders can be mixed, but you could easily tap your brush, you know, into one shade and another shade and kind of create something a little more customized, even beyond these eight colors that you see here. Now, something I'm a little confused about is the fact that these all pop out of the palette and there are claims made on the NYX website that you could like, you know, create your own customized palette. And on the NYX website, all of these shades are labeled and have names, but there are no names on the back of any of these in my palette as I pull them out. And I don't know that any of these are currently on the market individually sold. You know what I'm saying? So I would assume that's the plan in the near future if they're creating a removable, you know, palette that they would come out with refill shades. But I'm just saying I haven't seen them yet. But I want to cut to my little tutorial where I am using this both on the face and for a quick look on the eyes because I figured what the heck, there's eight colors in here. You could easily do an eye look with it, right? It's nothing groundbreaking, incredibly different. But for a quick, basically matte look, I think it's great. But I wanted to let you know the process products I have on my face before I started the contour. Um, I'm wearing the Hard Candy Glamouflage. Oh my gosh, Glamouflage and I'm wearing camo. What? This is in the shade Fair. I'm gonna have a big haul video coming up with some new products I've found in the drugstore and elsewhere, but that's... But that's the foundation that I've got all over my face. I used a little bit of my Sonia Kashuk All Covered Up Concealer in my darkest areas, and then a little bit of my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind in Brightener, just kind of on top of the cheekbones, nothing drastic, and set all of that with my new NYC BB Radiance Smooth Skin Perfecting Powder. So that makes up kind of my face canvas here as we start the tutorial. So to start out, I'm gonna contour my cheekbones. I really like using this cool shade for that area, and this is the contour contour brush from Real Techniques, so I'm just going to tap into that. And I find that when I think about kind of pulling my lips over to one side, you can reveal a little bit more of your actual facial structure. So when I go like this, it really pulls out this area and I can totally see um, where that indentation is down under the uh, cheekbone. Start laying down this color. 
you can really see that contour coming in in the right spot. And I think anytime you're wanting to get a really contoured look, it's good to use, I think, somewhat small brushes to not pull your color too far up or too far down. So this is the buffing brush. You've seen me use this at times for foundation. It's great for that, but then it's also nice to just kind of smooth over um, any areas where you have contoured. And I basically stop the contour just under the apple of my cheek. So if I smile, the chubby part right there, that's kind of where it ends for me. I've never really talked about that little rule of thumb but that's always kind of what I think about whenever I am contouring. So I'm going to go back to that shade again. Whoops. Add some hair to the mix. That's always fun. You can kind of blend a little bit with this small brush, but this buffing brush really does a nice job, I think, of diffusing the color out. And since this shade is so nice for creating natural looking shadows, this is what I actually like to take down here under the jawline and down the neck just a bit. So I go in with a larger brush. This is just a big kabuki brush that I've had for a long time. I think I came up with it at Big Lots years ago. It's gone through a lot of cleanings. It's not the softest brush ever, but for body type stuff, it really covers a lot of surface area and it works just fine. Now this palette, there are so many shades. There are lots of different ways you could use it. One of the things I really like doing at this stage of the game is now creating a little warmth on the face. So I like taking this shade right here and this is with my blush brush, um, my Up and Up blush brush from Target. I'm taking a little bit of that just above where I contoured, almost thinking about where you'd place blush. And then around my hairline, I kind of do a mix of that shade, a little bit of the cool shade, and I just start blending that in right up around the hairline and around the temples. And this is an area where contouring might not be my primary focus, but I'm thinking more kind of a bronzing and where the sun would naturally hit me, you know? I'm generally going to develop a warmer, more tan look up here, so that's why I pull in a warmer shade to go in this area. I kind of think of this area as the J-Lo effect because she always has a really warm, kind of sunny looking, sun-kissed um, contour happening right around her hairline. Now this is definitely not part of my routine, but the shade I would use if I were going to contour my nose would be this color right here. This same one we used in the hollows of the cheeks. And I would put it on a smallish brush like this and just kind of take it lightly down the sides. I don't do a lot of nose contouring because just the way my bone structure is, you can't really see it from the side, but like once I start putting product in here, there's a little bump right here kind of where glasses would rest, and anytime I go in with any sort of dark powder, that just shows more, so I don't bother with it. And I guess that would be a major contouring tip is to know your face. Don't just go through steps just because everybody's doing them. Think about whether you really need them or whether it actually makes you look better to do it. Next you could pull in a different brush or I've kind of cleaned off this uh, contour brush from Real Techniques and you've got all these highlight powders here. This is a pearly um, shimmery powder. You've got a matte kind of cream powder, this matte banana powder, and then this pearly kind of champagne color. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of this. This yellowish powder is just um, not too dark and it's kind of brightening. Adds a little coverage, I think, actually in the under eye area. So I'm just going to sweep that right in here just on top of the cheeks. And see how it kind of just really perfects that area somehow? And then I'm going to pull in a little blush here just because this is what I would normally do in the routine. You can kind of see where the placement is. Um, but this is that Romantic Rose Blush from Milani. Applying it right here on the outer part of the apple of the cheek. Kind of pulling forward a bit. So think about seeing it a little bit when your face is totally, you know, facing front. But then pulling backward. And this is happening above the deepest part of your contour. And a little bit above that um, warmer tan level I put in there, which is not always necessary. I just kind of like to do it. If I've got a palette with different shades, I like to work with them. And then my finishing step is actually just a little bit of this glowy champagne powder. I just like to tap that right here, just really lightly dusting it across the top of the cheek and the cheekbone. As you can see, I'm not really buffing this into the skin. I'm just kind of placing it exactly where I want it. A little bit of that looks nice down the nose as well. And then I just wanted to show you something super simple you can do with the eyes using this palette. I'm taking this color right here. This was our main um, cheekbone contour. I'm using my Sigma E25 and just applying this to my crease. Same thing here on the other side. 
And when I take this color in the crease, that's the first spot that I'm putting my brush, but then I kind of think about pulling the color upward just a little bit. I'm gonna do a little highlight under the brow with this shade. This is one of the two glowy um, highlights in the bunch. Taking a little bit of this matte cream and I'm just gonna dab some of that on my lids with my Sonia Kashuk Medium Shadow Brush. And then I'm just gonna pick up some of this darkest shade with the Medium Shadow Brush. I'm just dabbing a little bit of that right here in the outer corner, so outer part of the lid, a little bit into the crease. No, this is not any epic groundbreaking eye tutorial. I just wanted to show you kind of how these come off as shadows if you wanted to use them that way. And then taking that same dark brown with a pencil brush, it just gives a little, you know, super soft definition to the eye there. And it's a really legit pigmented brown. And for just a touch of brightness around the inner corner, I'm going to the white pearly color and just popping the inner corner a bit with that makes it look a little dewy. And then I'm just gonna finish this look with my two eyeliner go-tos. Um, one is the Milani Shadow Eyes in Almond Cream. That's gonna go right here in the uh, lower inner rim for brightness. And I'm using my Jordana Color Envy uh, Liquid Liner in Black Envy across the upper lash line. Good. So as far as the finished look that this contour palette gives, I would say it's looking pretty darn good. Um, you know, I had a good base with the foundation evening out my skin tone, and that is super important. You're not ever going to feel the true effects of contours and blushes unless you've got a really evened out skin tone from your foundation. So just keep that in mind. I think that's really important. And my lip, by the way, this is a new gloss from Hard Candy. It's called Fierce Effects Daring Lip Gloss in... 963. I think it had another name, but that was on the outer label. But as I look at this finished product of the look, I think there really is an advantage to having both, you know, cool and warm tone shades to use as you contour. I really did a similar method with this palette to what I do with the Smashbox one, because like I said, this contains a cool and a warm, and I love how, you know, your deepest shadow is that cool tone shade, and then you kind of get on top of it with a little more warmth. I love what's happening around the four Head. The only thing that kind of ends up requiring a little more effort is the fact that your highlights are kind of in extremes here. They're either fully matte or pretty darn shimmery. But you do have this nice yellow tone, which I think can be a little bit corrective and actually adds some decent coverage. So that was nice. And then you can add as much glow as you want or not on top of it. But I think it really would have been ideal if this puppy right here was like a satin finish like the highlight is in this Smashbox kit. That would have been kind of a really quick, you know, one step highlight for me. But I'm really loving the contour. I'm loving the glow that this palette is giving. It's really all the tones that one might need. There's so many options in these multi-shade palettes. I think it's really all about technique. And if you've got a decent texture to work with, which I think these are definitely a decently creamy, pigmented texture, I think it's really gonna be a workable thing for a lot of people. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was informative. If you were considering that palette, I'd give it a couple thumbs up for sure. And one more thing I should probably mention, if it comes down to traveling with one of these. Um, I'm definitely throwing in the Smashbox one because just the size on this, it's kind of bulky. I would maybe be a little concerned about all those pans of powder and something breaking perhaps on me. While options are always great, I do still love the compact simplicity of this palette. But thanks again, guys. I will see you all very soon. I have a haul video coming up, a pretty extensive haul with a lot of new cool drugstore items to talk about. Some cool and not cool, so that's always exciting. I'll see you later. Bye.